This episode is brought to you by Saycon, which is on my list of apps with the most potential for game-changing savings. Talk to your organization's mobility manager and they'll tell you the nightmare of managing multiple carriers per country, each with their own offerings, contracts, and integrations. Saycon abstracts and manages this for you, eliminating the swivel chair mobility management work and giving you asset and configuration data you can trust. Saycon is mobility managed. Check the description below. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robert Fedoric. It is so good to have you here. Welcome back to another Going With The Flow. This is a series where I do minimal edits, minimal edits, minimal edits, minimal edits, minimal edits, and build out stuff in Flow Designer just for the heck of it. Today we are going to talk about a use case that I saw on the community this morning. And this one says, how does one expire a to-do that has a due date but now the due date is passed and there still may be to do's not completed. So the idea here, if you read this thread, is that once a due date reaches its expiry, it's useless. I've seen a few cases of this. Uh, I remember a friend of mine was building a home management application and we were talking about how chores can't really go for it. If you've got a weekly chore, you just have to do it or you don't do it. If it's past its due date, it might as well not have been done. So there are a few cases in our work paradigms where this might be kind of handy. So what we're gonna do today is use Flow Designer to automatically close records at their due date. So to tell you the truth, I didn't really know what the poster meant by to-dos. I did a search on docs and I found four or five different things that to-dos apply to, didn't know which one. So we're gonna abstract this a little bit. I am going to use the private task table. This is uh, came to service now with the advent of uh, VTBs, visual task boards. And we've just got a bunch of private tasks in here. And you'll see that a couple of them are due 12 days from now. And a few of them are due 18 days ago. Now, if you've never seen this uh, days from now, days ago, you could just go to your settings here and it's under general, under date time, you could do calendar, time ago, or both, and that way I get a date and a little analysis of uh, where that date is relative to now. But the key here is these ones clearly have to go because we're past their due date. So let's go to Flow Designer and we're gonna create a new flow here. Let's call this close private tasks beyond due date. We're gonna run this as system user and we'll submit. All right, so step one is always add a trigger and there's two ways we could approach this. We could either say, hey, build a flow for the task and just wait till the due date and then close it. But I don't know if any other flows are gonna be running on this task. Uh, I think it's just easier if I make this scheduled. So every day we'll clear out the previous day's unexpired private tasks. So let's add a trigger. Let's call this daily. And we wanna give people the full day to get to those private tasks. Otherwise, we're gonna shut them off. So let's just run this at like 11 p.m. To, uh, so 11 p.m. is what, uh, 2300 hours? And there's our trigger. It's gonna do this every day at 11 p.m. So let's move on to actions. So the first thing we have to figure out is which private tasks do we have to expire or change your state? Let's go to actions and let's do a lookup records. Look up records. There we are. Always make sure you're getting the right one because there's a lookup record and a lookup records and that's burned me more than once. So we're gonna do lookup records against what table? Private task. That's a great table to experiment on by the way because it's not involved in a whole bunch of workflows. Okay, and the conditions. So the first thing we know is I don't wanna be querying over all kinds of private tasks that are already closed. So let's make sure that active is true. And we also only want to expire the ones that should be expired. So there's beyond their due date. So let's say due date is before today. We could probably get really strung up in nuance here, but for me, if it works in general, it's going to be fine. Okay, I don't need to order it and I don't need a max results. So let's hit done. So we have the first action is now we've looked up a bunch of the records. So what do we do from there? Let's add an action and we're going to use some flow logic here and we're going to say for each. 
So we've done the lookup, and for each item in the lookup, we want to perform an action. So it wants to know what item or, or what is going to be the list of records to do the for each on. And luckily we've determined that in our lookup action. So I'm going to say, get me the private task records that I found in my lookup record action. So private task records, drag that here and we're good to go. Let's hit done. You see that we've got this new pathway. So this is what do I want to do within the for each? So let's grab this and we're going to take an action in here and we are going to update record. Which record are we going to update? And this is why I love Flow Designer, right? I don't want to do any scripting to figure it out. I could just go to the private record that will be analyzed in each for each, in each of the for each loops. So let's drag that private task record over to our record selector. Then it knows that we're in the private task table and let's get started. So what did we want to do? We wanted to close those private tasks. Now, if you ask me, uh, I would definitely want to know the difference between a task that's closed gracefully, i.e. the person responsible for it closed it intentionally versus something that was automatically closed for reasons. Okay, so we're going to say the state is going to be closed incomplete. We're just going to assume that the work wasn't done because nobody came in and closed it manually. The other thing I'm going to want to do is leave a work note to give anybody who looks at these in arrears as information for them to tell them why it was closed. So let's go ahead and come in here and add a work note. And let's say this task was closed automatically because it exceeded its due date. And I'm also going to say closed by, and I'm going to copy the title of the flow. If anybody knows a way to get the title of the flow in Flow Designer, besides copy pasting it, I would love to know. Please add a comment below. All right, so we've changed the state and the work notes. That should be good. Now, I'll say this over and over again in this series. Part of the reason why I love looking at Flow Designer before I start doing business rules is due to this error handler. And if something goes wrong in this, I want an error to jump out at me. Uh, but I want to jump out at me in, in, um, in a disruptive way. I don't want to have to think about parsing the logs to see if there was an error. I want to be told, hey, Robert, there was an error. So best way to do that is with an incident. So let's add an action. And in this, we're going to create a record. Or create task, I should say. And we're going to use the table incident and we are going to assign that to the service now group. So assignment group is service now, service now admins, and we should have a short description, flow failure. And again, we'll copy that include the title, drop that in there. We want to make these things as informative as possible. And in the description, copy that and then we're also going to put the code and the message because that's something that the error handler will provide for us in flow designer so we'll go to error handler bring over the code drop that into my description and also bring over the message and drop that into description so super simple didn't have to do a lick of javascript and I've got proper error handling. So mm. another reason why I love Flow Designer is because I can just test this. I don't have to wait a day. I don't have to write a scheduled job. I can test this and make sure that it works the way I want to. So let's go to test and let's just make sure we understand what success looks like. So we understand that we have these private tasks. Some of them are due in the future. Some of them were due a long time ago. So we expect that these five private tasks will have their state changed to closed and complete. Run a test, viewing the execution details. I love this interface in Flow Designer because it tells me if everything has been successful or not and I can dive into the details. So let's see the first record that it updated was ptask1003. Let's validate that that was one of the ones that should have updated. Yep, 18 days ago. And it dropped some information into the notes. So the state has been changed to four. It's work notes is this task was closed automatically because it exceeded its due date. Awesome, that's exactly what we wanted. And we could also go through this and we can see the different uh, records in that for each. So we can validate every single transaction. 
and our create incident error handler did not run because there was no error to be had. So there you have it folks, in a little less than 10 minutes, we created something without a lick of JavaScript that can replace a scheduled job or a business rule for use cases where you're doing a mass update to tickets on a scheduled basis. Thank you to the poster on community for this question. If you're new to ServiceNow, you definitely want to jump on that community. Super, super valuable for long form thought out content. Also, one last thing, I want you to know that I do recruiting. And the reason you may want to use me as a ServiceNow recruiter, whether you're looking for work or if you're looking for ServiceNow resources, is that I understand the industry. What other recruiter would be able to teach you how to do Flow Designer from scratch? I've been in every position in the ServiceNow ecosystem. I've been the BA, I've been the developer, I've been the architect, I've been a project manager. All right, I understand what kind of skills these roles entail. I've also been in the trenches and been looking for a step up into the right position. So I understand both sides of this equation. Pick Robert Fedoric the next time you need a ServiceNow resource. Thanks for watching.